Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Distant Worlds 2, episode number 3, in our first release series of the game. I want to make a few comments. Uh, first of all, I will be streaming the game on the release day, which should be probably only like 12 or 16 hours from the when this video goes live. So that'll be release day in the evening or afternoon Pacific time. So that'll be sometime in the evening for most folks in the United States. Um, also, I wanted to make a note about the different races that are available. If you're like kind of contemplating which to play as, I wanted to put your mind at ease a little bit because, um, you know, the races, they do play pretty similarly. Um, you can, you know, you'll probably want to move your ship designs to take advantage of the different races, like um, whatever their, their bonuses are, their sweet spot. But you can end up designing the exact same ships for all the different races and it won't really matter. I mean, you, you it might be slightly less efficient, but not much. So if it's something you're like kind of worried about, I would say don't worry too much about it. And you know, if you're thinking, okay, I'm the Tortuga's playing as the Xenox, if I play as the humans, I won't have a good idea of what I'm doing. Um, don't think that way at all. The, the overlap between the two is is very high. Okay, now what are we gonna start off by doing? Um, I am going to first start establishing the research we want to do in the very near future. We're about to get the ability to jump outside of our system for the first time, interstellar travel, which is like, it should be a very dramatic moment for us. So I'm looking forward to that. We have yet to encounter pirates, which is, you know, a great lucky scenario. I suspect that won't remain the case forever. So what I think we're going to do next is grab research labs, since this will just act as a, a direct upgrade um, of our research potential. Then I'm going to move towards getting um, resorts. We're going to want passenger compartments for that. And then next we'll go over to construction. We'll get the expanded space stations, which gives us first large mining stations, which are just bigger mining stations. Um, the civilians will switch over to that design, but also, of course, the resort stations we need in order to build resorts. And once those are up, we'll also want passenger ships. These are small passenger ships, the fourth one to the right, or second from the left. That's going to allow us to actually transport our population to the resorts. Now, we don't need that first. We actually want the space stations first so that we can start building a resort on our home planet, um, even without having passengers, you know, I think that they, I think they can automatically move into the, the resort. Um, that's something I'm, we'll, we'll just test live together because I'm, I'm like doubting myself if that's true or if I built it before and I actually got the passenger ships before I noticed the population moving there. So um, we'll find out, yeah. So this is a very peaceful, queue of research. <laughs> it's a very peaceful uh, research queue, but hopefully we just, you know, somehow avoid dealing with any pirates for a little bit longer. Um, okay, so right now, because of ship maintenance being high, I guess we are dealing with a, a small, okay, there. I, I was like, wait, I thought we had a surplus, and we do. So let's go up to 4x. We don't really need to do much right now. We can watch the explorers all bash their head against a bunch of different um, oh, this one I might want to change. Oh, you're already traveling. Okay. So we have have we have explored all the base planets in our system. So this is, what system is this called again? Alzuk? So this is our home system of Alzuk. Um, which kind of sounds like, I don't know, like a zoom tide or something. I don't, it doesn't sound like a real word. Alzuk. So Alzuk, home to hairball. It's the system of hairball and we're definitely not going to build anything since we're going to be getting the better warp drives very quickly and that's going to require an entire wave of ship design so if you're into ship design then just stay tuned just a few minutes more and we'll be knee deep in that for the for the few ships that we do uh, that we are manually um, designing complete construction so they still want us to do this again just because it's going to increase our maintenance and right now we're on a knife's edge however our construction ships are sitting idle this might be a good time to look at what other 
places we might want to get. So this is more Castellon. That is a priority, yes. We have Polymer and Cassian Crystal here. Silicon. Um, we can also look at, if you hover your cursor over the, the ones with the red dot, it means that you have a, a shortage of it. Just to signal to you which ones you might want to prioritize. But if you rest your cursor, it tells you exactly how bad that production shortage is. Not too bad for Polymer. Anything below one is, like, okay. Also, <laughs> I guess it scales with your with your um, empire size, though. So maybe at this point, with only one planet, one spaceport, maybe 0.5 is is bad. Um, this is a good one. It's going to give us Emeros Crystal, Necro Stone, Anosalia. So I'll probably prioritize getting that one as well. Although right now, did we get this mining station working? I guess I was going over to supposedly build uh, the mining station at Alzic, I mean at Lorark, and obviously he went over here for a station which is over here. I don't know, it must have been a little bit of a bug. Oh, and there it is. So this is a massive day in the history of our people. We've developed a hyperdrive, which is capable of much extended range, which we'll see as soon as we actually get one of them on one of our ships. We'll start off with the construction ship, upgrade that, it goes to V3. Um, and now the upgrade button has already swapped out the skip drive for a warp drive um, for the warp bubble generator. Uh, I am actually a little surprised. I think the warp generator is bigger in size than the skip drive. Let me go to all components name category. So that should put them next to each other. Hop right there. Oh, no, no, no. The warp bubble generator is smaller by five. And that must mean that the Garox hyperdrive, which is the next one, is bigger. Because I remember in very early in the game, you're going to have to make some room for this. But if we actually just leave this, these ships the way they are, the warp bubble generator, by the way, is much better than the skip drive. Not just by range and all that, but by efficiency and even by size now we see. So if that's the case, it does allow us to fit one extra small, um, small fuel cell. Or it looks like if we want to get up to the 200, I think it's 200. Yeah, 200 hyperdrive speed, the first item. Um, we will need another reactor. I think we'll go with the reactor then. And I'm going to switch this back to... Oh, the reactors are going to be too big, of course, right? Because they're more than just 10. Basic reactor is 23. My goodness. I don't see any way we can get that without sacrificing a shield or something like that, which I'm not too keen on doing. We could, could not get another shield, cannot get a weapon. Pretty much the only thing we can do is get fuel, but does this actually reduce our number 172 to 169? And why is that? I mean, besides the extra weight or mass, whatever, no, it's really because if you see this towards the bottom, it says static energy used one per second. So a basic fuel cell takes one energy just to have on your ship. And I don't think that makes sense. And it's actually the reason why I wasn't sure this would change because it didn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, by the way, these ships, uh, people have been commenting that the ships looks really cool. Um, if you want to turn off the bays, they look, I think they look even better when you don't have those bubbles appearing. I like to leave those on because it shows you where your hard points are going to be. And when you put stuff on there, generally that I think the actual look of it changes too. I'm, I can't remember. But yeah, if you turn those bubbles off. So the bubbles are where the engines are. You can see that we have the engine one, engine two. This is where engine zero would go. So if we have two engines, they'll be on the left, right to be symmetrical. If we have three, they'll fill all three. And if you only had one, it'd be up here so that you aren't, you know, it, it's not asymmetric. And that explains why, the, by the way, while even though this ship can only have two engines, why it has three engine spots, so that they can get the symmetry right, depending on how many engines you put. I mean, that kind of attention to detail really, I think, speaks to the level of polish the game was going for. Anyway, we are no closer to finishing this. Um, I think we're going to do that, though. The efficiency, I mean, the speed is not that bad. Fuel range will be really good without that fuel cell, but maybe I don't need it. Actually, 300 
M is is quite large. That's I, that's like way bigger than we need. <laughs> Which means this must already have a lot of fuel cells. In fact, what I could do is take off two fuel cells and then I can maybe fit a reactor. No, are we like too short? We're too short. I mean, size too short, not like 200. You're just too short. Um, could take off another fuel cell. I mean, this thing had a ton, just a ton of fuel cells on it. How bad are we gonna be in fuel range? I'm not, just that I'm not that crazy about these things going all over the place, so I don't really mind the shortened fuel range, fuel whatever. But I think it's just getting ridiculous. Let me cancel and re up, uh, re upgrade. So we might just leave it how it is, which is the smallest change, which will require the smallest amount of re re um, retrofit time at the space station. So there is something to be said for that. We'll also be ready to go when we get the larger um, Garrix hyperdrives. This won't need any, any tweaks at all. Although that's not true because I believe if we haven't gotten better reactors by then, um, the Garrix drive also requires more energy. Anyways, I'm just going to do the basic upgrade here. Let's see if there's anything critical I'm missing. No, we're okay. So we'll save that. That's V3. And we kind of know how this will go for the Traveler as well. We get five extra space, which we just won't do anything with for now. And they're full on general slots anyway, so I don't even have to think about min-maxing something. Now with 16, I technically could fit a particle beam on, but I just don't think Explorer ships need any of that. So we'll just do a very quick upgrade and we're on our way. Now the ships are set to automatically retrofit themselves, so we'll see them doing that on their own. And then usually the exploration ships will, will, yeah, will queue that up as soon as they're done with their current job. So I actually can get this one to stop. Wait, where are you going? Are you in the middle of, oh, you're in the middle. Okay, so you're just gonna finish that job first. That's fine. And uh, I forgot to crash research this, which we can't even do with our money. Not yet, so I didn't lose any time. Anyways, this is the fledgling Tortugan... What are we called again? Caterans. <laughs> the fledgling Caterans are just... We just have this technology and are really excited about it. Gives us the ability to bounce around our solar system a lot faster than they were doing before. Interesting, independent colony of Actarians. And this actually was really exciting to me for a moment. I thought I was playing as the Actarians, which is my favorite race, but they're naturally slightly hostile towards us, but we could attempt to colonize them eventually. There is a bit of an overlap between the Actarians and the Xenox, um, as far as uh, planet type that they, they can live on. Although we're not water, I mean cats, right? Uh, and they are like purely water. Uh, they, since we we like the ice planets and they like the ocean planets, um, they're not too dissimilar as as far as like colonization suitability goes, at least in this game. Anyway, I'm gonna dismiss that. That must mean, of course, that we got a lone trader. Um, <clears throat> these are paired events. When the lone trader comes in, they always tell you about some independent colony nearby. So we'll take a look at that. Oh, that's a nice design. That's a neat looking one. Ah, this game is so cool. Okay, so we could actually look up what are the Darians, but if you don't know who they are, just you can pause the <laughs> pause the screen and read it yourself, I guess. They told us of a nearby colony and they want us to build more construction ships, which I am not gonna approve. We don't have the money for it. And we barely have the money to do this crash research, which will really discourage them from asking me to build any kind of ships since we don't have the money now. But I do want to build some more exploration ships. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Not the liberated. Oh no. Okay. So... We have two options. Let me read this, but oh boy. The liberated of the stars. Greening's... Greetings, Xenox. We, the liberated of the stars, know of your kind. You are hoarders of knowledge, yes. You mind your vex. Much as we mine precious resources from asteroids, you hide with them away for your own uses, or trade them when you can do so to your full advantage. Yes, we know you well. Because your reputation precedes you, we know that you cannot resist the lure of new information. 
We have traded with other salvagers for what they claim is a data bank from an ancient Freedom Alliance ship. It is said to be filled with fascinating and valuable information from the long ago war. Perhaps you would like to know more about the ancient enemy, the Shakturi. So now we know the name of our, you know, uh, the age old enemy, the Shakturi. And for people who played Distant Worlds 1, that's the same one. Their technology is said to be of great interest to researchers. Perhaps you would like to know where ancient data archives of your own ancestors are stored. It is possible such information can be found on this computer, and we will sell it to you if you can pay our price. Uh, I don't know if I want to spoil all these things, so this gameplay will involve some spoilers, but in this case only for the Xenox. I don't have the money, and just leaving that as it is for now, let me demand to examine the computer. Xenox, you must think the liberators of the stars are fools. If you examine the data, then you will have to pay the data. Then you, then you will have the data, and you will have gotten what we sell without paying a price. No, you can accept the computer as it is, or you can declare your mistrust and make us your enemies. For this insult, the price has been raised. We're going to refuse to buy the computer. <laughs> Xenox, you surprise us. Al. All the galaxy knows you are knowledgeable, but now I see that you are also clever for a dirt dweller. Yes, never buy that which you cannot examine. The computer is a forgery and worthless. We know that, and now you do too. You have earned our respect. Perhaps we might yet be friends. Whoa! Interesting. So I actually did not know that outcome because I tried to buy it last time. <laughs> like, woe to me. So that's very interesting. Um, they are displeased with us still, and they will start attacking our ships if we are not careful. So let me climb that. Oh, there's the Akdarian clock. Yeah, that's actually pretty close. By the way, have we even taken a moment to look at where we are? Let me just close the whole thing, and here's our our galaxy. You can see the nice spiral shape built in underneath, which is kind of gives you an idea of where the spirals are. Now, we do have nebulae on. And this should follow the arms of the of the spirals. You can see this is an arm, and there's the nebulae trying to follow that. It's a little harder to tell what's going on there, but you can see that here's another one. And so that's how it's supposed to work. Uh, the nebulae are supposed to kind of confine you to an arm, but thankfully for us, I did turn the nebulae on only like uh, sparse, and it looks like a couple black holes here too. So we won't have to fight them too much. Now, Liberty of the Stars are ask, asking for us to pay them, and this is a, a real problem, because they are uh, they are a darn fierce component uh, opponent. Yeah, look at the strength on this destroyer. First of all, um, the way the ship sizes go starts off at escort, then it goes to frigate, then destroyer. We only have escorts right now. We don't have frigates. And we definitely don't have destroyers, so this is going to just straight up kick our butts. Which means I'm going to have to accept this treaty. <laughs> They're just going to decimate everything. That's going to put a big dampener on our economy, naturally, paying off 1500 to the pirates. Now my total income is, it's, it's like almost a third of my total income. So that's bad. But, you know, this is the what The pirates are supposed to be this kind of a balancing nuisance in the beginning of the game. and I, I do kind of appreciate them. I understand what they're doing, and I like it. Um, although, in the moment, I, I hate it, of course. <laughs> okay, so now I still want to buy... First of all, we got the research crash research, but I also want to get more exploration ships. And I think that now's the time before we run out of money, which will happen pretty soon, since we now will no longer have an income until we can afford to defend ourselves and then stop paying the ransom money to the, the pirates. So I'll decline that, because I just ordered some myself. Our exploration has stuck none unknown items on now is like two. Oh, go ahead and show me. So that means our researchers are sorry, our exploration ships can usually find something a little better there. As far as current mining locations, we did get the second castle on source, which is great. Um, this one, Lorak, is just loaded with stuff. We have an ambassador, which usually comes as soon as you start finding other people. Obviously, there's no re reason to have an ambassador if you don't know anybody else in the world. I mean, galaxy exists. What is our? What do our people look like? I think we had bad ruler. Let's see how he's doing now. Okay, good, good. 
So ship maintenance and civilian ship maintenance um, have both gone up, which has countered... I think it's countered completely the military ship savings. So this is minus 5%, but the net, because ship maintenance is all ships, I take it, um, and civilian ship and military ship is just subsets of that, we're up to a total of plus 10 for civilian and only minus 1 for ship, for military ship, I should say. We have population growth at 0% bonus. How is that trait? What? Oh, he has a plus, my, plus 5 and minus 5. Okay, um, colony income minus 5% is terrible. Just terrible. Mining rate plus 20% is amazing. Diplomacy plus 10% is good. Happiness plus 5%. I mean, this colony income is like my worst nightmare. I was already dreading the fact that we had maintenance, <laughs> the bad maintenance on these guys, but oh gosh, you make it so that not only do I not have good maintenance, I also get less money. That's terrible. Anyway, we'll have to micromanage this a little bit. I think we'll sacrifice our colony a little bit for better research. And it's about to get a lot worse, unfortunately, because we're about to upgrade our labs. And when once that happens... Um, what? We're making money? Oh, well, that just means we got to do this. Okay, we completed a new construction ship. So we're now interstellar. I mean, has anybody jumped to a different system yet? can probably turn off the nebulae again. Yeah, I don't think we've been to another system yet. Born in Kind. That's funny because that's in the last series. That was the name of a, a system that was very unfriendly. So we'll decline this. Um, polymer. Well, I mean, I think it's fair to ask for polymer. We can decline that. So they want us to build escorts, the military ships. But frankly, we don't have the military might to, to challenge the pirates and extra military ships right now are just going to end up being more expenses, more maintenance. For silicon, I think, yeah. I don't know if this is... Which planet is this? Is it for? I will accept it. It's a private economy expense. Oh, they have 300,000. They're, they're doing fine. Oh my gosh, they're doing really good. Okay, research labs are complete. Now, that's not an immediate like v1 v2 type upgrade let me explain one thing in the tech tree something that uh you know i made the mistake about myself recently when you see basic troop compartment and basic passenger compartment then you see troop compartment passenger compartment the name has changed right the basic has been dropped but then you see troop compartment passenger compartment go to v2 when it goes to same name with a different v v number that part will be automatically upgraded in place on your ships or on your stations when you research the new technology. So it does not require a part shift. But these kind of things with the change of names, those do. You actually have to go and retrofit. So um, the V2s are just like instantaneous. It propagates through your whole empire. You get it no matter where you are. So that's um, the research station thing we just got is not one which propagates through. <laughs> so we're gonna have to go and manually do the, the change. I don't wanna edit. Why did we have zero of these? I don't know why, but we'll go over here and we will change our basic research lab for a, go latest, is it gonna work? It's working, I think. Wait, let me cancel, why don't, I could just upgrade this, but yeah, that's right, I, I know why. Um, there's no reason to do the the upgrade button because we didn't actually end up building this. So there are no SSP3s in, in the universe right now. Um, so we got the basic research lab. That's I mean, the research lab is all we can do with this. We have 10 available. I'm not sure if there's anything we want to do with that. Yeah, we can't get another weapon. We're low on shields already. I'm going to leave it as is. We basically are waiting for the next, um, for, for better, uh, what is it? What's the word? For better space stations, small spaceports. I mean, when we have better spaceports, bigger ones, we can actually put more weapons, more shields, stuff like that. But we don't have that yet. And I currently have the research stations on automatic, but let me see, is this already done? Yeah, this is already with the research lab. Now, they usually mess up. Okay, this one is actually, yeah, no, no, they messed it up. <laughs> I don't really like that. 
I guess? Both of... No, yeah, they they can't cover. It should be... Um, yeah, ugh, anyway. This is not necessarily wrong, but... They have weapons on these three sides instead of putting... I don't know. I would have put seeking weapons... Like, you know, I would have made a match. But they didn't do that. Anyway, this is good enough. We'll, we'll not worry about it. I'll probably bog down more into the ship design details. But, you know, not on episode 3 of the very first series. So, we'll wait. But you could fix that if you wanted. You can go and adjust the... Move the weapons to better... I think better firing arc locations. Oh my gosh. Okay, I was like, wait a second. Yeah, we're actually doing okay. And now, the, okay, right. The reason why we, we were doing okay is because the research is going to dip at first while those upgrades are happening. Like, the Glee spaceport is probably in the middle of... Nope, oh, it's up to SSP3. So both of those are done. And are there other research locations that we could take advantage of? No. So we're basically just waiting... By the way, I'm a ding-dong. I forgot to... 6,000 for this. Crash research everything. All the things. How are our scientists? Okay, good. Methodical. This is great. Decreases the chance of a critical research success or fail. I still like this because the, the critical failures are just terrible. Uh, new spy. Oh, yeah. We could get our spies going. This is one of the advantages of the Xenox people. I don't know. It's always hard to get spies working against pirates. Steel territory map is a 62%. 58%. So this one is obviously a better spy. But that, unfortunately, that also means you don't want to lose them. So I could take a risk. We are paying them protection money. I don't think I'm going to try to be friends with the likes of uh, the Hakonish. I am not going to do it. I don't think it's worth it. 62%. I'd probably do it if it was over 70 Give me like two-thirds chance or better, and I will do it. Anyway, with the new research labs, we're really blown away at this research. Just really cranking on it. 54 days. It's going by quick. Okay. Exploration items somewhere else. I guess somebody else will come over and explore that. I hope. We have... Oh my gosh. All... It, every, 100%. This is just terrible. 100% of our people are... <laughs> no! Every single one of them are... are uh, they're all exploring asteroids. Now, that's actually okay because they don't have any other planets to explore. Does that mean that they can't reach? They... My gosh, they can reach. What are you doing? Go somewhere else here. Look at it. Manually go explore that system. Explore system. Um, yeah, we're just going to have to put these guys on manual. I, I will just have to do this. Okay, so you go explore this system. Like, this is our jump range, and this is our fuel range. So we can't... You, there's a limit on how far you can jump, even if you have the fuel to go further. You have to basically do some bouncing off different stars. Essentially, you can think of it... I like to think of it as, like, recalculating the jump computer. You know, the jump computer could have error if it goes too far or something like that. Anyway, this is just... I don't know why these guys are not exploring new systems. Let's get the heck out of there. Why are you doing that? That's not what I want you to do. Well, why don't you just go explore um, Born and Come then? So we'll at least get three out of the system. I mean, I bought extra exploration ships specifically to do more interesting things than... Yeah, not explore at... There's got to be a bug in this. It's just not working right. Anyways, go explore this, go explore that. We'll wait for the next one to finish. And you will go... Is this a star? Oh, it is. I almost missed it. Yeah, there's one right here and one right there. Um, 16 more seconds. Okay, we finished the research on this. So basic transport systems are done. Um, still going to decline that. We'll immediately go and try to crash. We are not going to be able to crash research this. Let's see. This is 15,000 credits. And we have, well, we can crash research, it turns out. 
we go ahead and do that. Oh, so this is number two. I'm sorry, I'm clicking on the wrong one. Whoops. All right, we'll pay the 15,000 to crash research it. And we'll be on our way. Okay, you just switched. So let's get you to do something else like this guy. Now we're having fun. Now we're doing good. So they're all going to jump off. And this is great. Look at there they go. They're fanning out. They're exploring. This is ex so exciting for us. We're likely to encounter many more pirates. <laughs> no, but this is, I really, I mean, this is the, can you imagine if we were doing this in like real life? Oh, we're going to explore new systems. It's really, really good. We're probably going to discover some alien life that we don't really like, except trade. Oh my gosh, no. We are not going to pay for any of that. No, 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 no. We're gonna pay for expanded space stations and that will give us resorts. Now resorts will come up um, by default in ship designs once we have all the parts. You could add new and try to make it yourself, but we don't have the, well, yeah, we haven't researched resorts yet. That's what we're in the process of researching. So once that's done, we can just add it ourselves. Okay, you're gonna retrofit, which is, yeah, I. Yeah, that should be done, or should have already have been done. Okay, they're both doing it. That's good. Ah, the Library of Alzuk. Great. We'll definitely investigate. We've discovered the Library of Alzuk. Ancient ruins from a lost civilization. Investigate. Ah, a massive quake was triggered at our homeworld. Well, this is terrible, because I don't think cats like earthquakes. In the Library of Alzuk, we have made a curious discovery. As our team enters the runes, a massive quake is mysteriously triggered at our home world in the same system. The quake has caused extensive damage and has even damaged the quality of the planet itself. However, it also changed aspects of our home world, actually making it more hospitable to our race. As a result, our home world now has a permanent population growth bonus. These ruins provide the following calling bonuses, plus 3% development, six reactor research, scenery, so that means essentially we can build a research station here, which is great. And we can also build a resort base there. 3% scenery is like the lowest I would ever consider. I mean, we'll do it, but it's not very good. Um, we can't get the other one because we'd have to colonize the planet and that's not gonna happen. Oh, what the heck? We actually, No, no, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. We can after some research. There are, I mean, there is research which can help you with uh, tech. I mean, uh, whatever it's called, colonization. Where's the colonization stuff? There it is. Yeah, here it is. So this is, um, was it a mangrove swamp? I, I forgot what it was. Marshy Swamp. Okay, so anyways, it's a marshy swamp, and each one of the two available techs um, will give you 5% um, increase in habitability, which might take that one over the 20% mark. Anyways, let's take a look at the damage done to our planet. It is not showing up yet, is it? Wait a second. Is the quality of this really... It permanently damaged our quality. It's not just a temporary thing, it's permanent. But it also increased the quality? I I want to get that one back. Can we see that again? Um, okay, it has also changed aspects of our homeworld, actually making it more hospitable for our race. As a result, our homeworld now has a permanent population growth bonus. Let's find out plus 20% to all research, plus 10% population growth. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. Now, I think that means we need a, a research station here to take advantage of the all research. Let's see, are we getting it already? Yeah, we're only getting 10%. So what I want to do is I want to build a research station pretty close to my planet, uh, to my spaceport. I think I'll get it. Let's see, what's your firing arcs? Can I see your weapons? You won't show me your weapons? 
do we have any weapons on this? Um, I, th I mean, I'm sure it has weapons. I don't know where they are, but okay, let's just put it like right here. Should be far enough apart. Oh, that's good. So we'll build a research station, and right now we don't have the all research. 20% all research is just fantastic, though, so that's really important. All right, we can stop filtering these. I'm not looking at the message log now. So it gave us a plus 10% population growth, but it impacted the maximum size of our planet. I mean, the maximum population of our planet because the 5% um, reduction in quality will impact the max population. Okay, so we'll decline this. Um, we encountered more Hakonish ding-dongs. I hate the Hakonish. They're, well, they're interesting to play as, but uh, I mean, they're terrible to play against. <laughs> they're gonna hit us. They're gonna ask for production money. Yeah, well, that's that's bad. Um, okay, so this Alzuk system, Darylian Crystal, Necros, we'll assign that. Yeah, that's good. Decline that. And we're gonna, they want money from us too. How are we doing in terms of money? We are not doing great. Why are we doing so poorly? Oh my gosh, we encountered Vorticar? Well, we'll have to go look at this. We have encountered a Vorticar space monster in the Ven Vecunder system. Vorticars seem to be large, slow clean based organisms that can survive in the airless vacuum of space. They appear to feed on metallic minerals found in asteroids, but we suspect they are equally happy to eat any passing spaceships that they are able to catch. It would be wise to look for any Vorticars looking, lurking in the asteroid fields. Uh, look out, not just look. <laughs> I mean, they're fun to look at, but they're also something to look out for. So you should be getting the heck out of here. Where are you? Oh yeah, this is so cool. We're actually starting to explore those new places. But hopefully also leaving very quickly because the thing is with the Vorticar, they have, um, they have, a, I, I think like a natural stealth. So it's, oh, did you, did you go away? Did you escape? Jumping, good. Don't take damage. Don't take damage. Get out of there. Good. You made it. Woo! It's a close call. Um, we'll probably have to accept this treaty. Are we under attack yet? No, that's right. We were under attack by the Vorticar, so that was not the the pirates. Um, we also have something at Alzac 1. Got it. Dismiss. I would like for them to explore that, but, you know, these explorers would rather look at asteroids. Um, and that does mean, of course, that once all this is done, we probably would want to prioritize getting better exploration. And you can see I, I don't have to do this, but I've been kind of deferring the the interesting bit of getting a military. <laughs> I've been deferring that. So that's something you don't have to do. You know, you can you can get a military and fight the pirates right away. Basically use the money that you would be paying them to build your own military. I have chosen not to go that route. And it's viable, by the way. I mean, you're st usually when the pirates hit you, they mostly raid. They don't destroy stations. It'll set you back a little bit in terms of money. And you your ships, you might lose ships fighting them. Probably you will. Okay, so now we want to do this. And that attack will go away. So yeah, I think I accept it already. This is now we're paying 3,000, which is really painful. I'm going to put a lot of that money into the research. How are we doing as far as research goes? 61, so not too bad. Um, okay, great. So we have the expanded space stations, and that means that we can build a resort here right away. Is this done yet? Not even close. Man, it's only got one part built? Okay, anyway, we'll want to build uh, a resort on the other side. Perfect. This is just so we have overlapping arcs of weapons fire. I mean, I may manually take control of what these stations look like. In fact, I'm gonna let the, whatever is being built right now continue, but in the future, let's go ahead and start building these ourselves because we will do a better job of it. And it's, you know, it's kind of fun. I will leave the mining station in, in the hands of the AI unless I look at this and I see something I just cannot tolerate. Particle beam should be the 360. Okay, this is, well, that's pretty weird. Good deflection shield number. 
two docking bays, so they really have a lot of throughput. And these are the large, this is must be a large one, right? I think this is the large design. So 1050, um, 1050, let's just go over here. Yeah, this is 1050, maximum size 1050, good. So they're using the large mining stations, which is good to see. That ex probably explains why they have four shields on them. I would like to get at least one thing of armor on them because they're vulnerable to rail guns or any weapons which penetrate through the shields. I'm still, I'm not gonna build more construction ships yet. I probably can build one more. Yeah, we have the money, I'll build one more. You know, it's a, it's a pending pension operation here. Okay, it's 40 minutes. We'll go a little bit longer on this one. Just maybe another minute. See how far we can get. I probably ought to be paying attention to these guys. Oh yeah, you don't. You guys don't have missions. Why don't you have missions? Because some of these places, I guess, are just <laughs> there's nothing to nothing to really explore. Well, let's um let's survey Alzic One. What are the other places that could use some investigation? Alzic One. That might have been it. Oh, no, I mean, here. I was like, two? Okay, so let's get another exploration ship. Come back and explore this. And I'll leave them on automatic after that. They will continue their, like, oh, wait, you're already doing this one, so don't. Wait, where are you? Where are you? What the heck? Why does it say 120? Well, I'll put you on automated. I don't know what exactly you're doing there. Um, okay, so that's one done, two done. And we have this one as well. Survey and go to automated. And the we'll, we'll get around this whole thing. We'll have asteroids getting cleared out a lot faster. As soon as we get the tech for the scanners here, the exploration scanners, which is probably what I'll get after the planetary exploration. So this allows you to do faster surveying, which is the planets, like getting the information. The things I just clicked on for the planets, that was like, that was survey. But just to get the resources, which is mostly what you're interested in for the asteroids, um, the resource scanner here will do it, and it'll do it in a, a larger range. So ex exploration range of 5,000. It'll give you all the resources for any items within 5,000 of the ship. And that's good. Anyways, let's call this video to a close here. I, I just, I'm loving with this world too. <laughs> I have to say it. I get, I'm really having a lot of fun. So anyways, I'll be streaming again if you're watching this kind of like when it's coming out on release day in the uh, in the evening Pacific time. Um, so hopefully, I'm, I'm planning to be there just to like do a Q&A, just essentially answer any questions people are having as they start up the game and they're trying to figure out what's going on. Just trying to make myself available and just have a kind of fun community center where we're all playing the game and having fun together. Get your reactions on different things. It'll be, it'll be fun to hear. Anyway, other than that, I'll catch you back for episode four, which should be only 24 hours from this one. Until then, thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.